with John and Clay recently when I stopped off to, at their shop to buy a new starter. I talked to them about their alternators and they told me they had three varieties. They've got a standard Bosch replacement. They've got the Enduralast 2. Now the Enduralast 2 is what we're going to put onto my bike today. This one has 400 watts, 28 amps of power. A big step up from the original. The original has about 170 watts, uh, approximately up to maybe about 200. So this is a big step up from that. Then there's the really nice one, if you guys are really looking to upgrade. They've got one with permanent magnets and it puts out 450 watts. So we're going to start replacing my alternator. Come along and let, we'll show you how we're doing it. So here's all our tools. These are some of the things you're going to need. You're going to need some basic Allen wrenches, socket wrenches. I've got the soldering iron, wire crimpers. I've got the multimeter, screwdriver. What I always like to see is can I replace it with the stock tool set? Because if I go bad and everything breaks in the middle of the mountains somewhere, will this get me through it? So here we go. We're going to try to see if this all works. Here's the motorcycle we're going to be working on today. It's a 1993 BMW GSPD. Pretty much stock. Now one of the things that this does not have on it that the standard PD has is the lower fender and the mud guard for the front of the engine. We've got the bag mount here and we just have to disconnect that and pull it back. Like I said, the BMW, the PD, just has a quick little disconnect here. Now the thing you got to make sure, turn off your fuel and then pull the hoses. They'll probably leak a little bit. And then the tank will just come straight off. We're going to remove the air cleaner. This is for a later step because we've got to get to some wiring underneath the starter relay. So this will pull that cover off. Pull off the air cleaner. And then this will pull up if we're lucky. And slide backwards. Just slide it right on out of there and then put all these parts off to the side. This is the voltage regulator on this particular bike. We're going to pull the connector for it. And the screws that connect it are not the easy ones that you see on the top, they're the ones underneath. Connect right here off the alternator. The, oops, going to break that one, but we have replacement cables, so these don't matter. And then we can pull this whole board right on out of here. And there's our old board. A little tight in there, but not bad. The last bolt is sort of under, behind the crankcase ventilation now, so we covered it up. We don't want to drop any nuts and bolts in there, so we covered it up with a piece of duct tape and pulled it out of our way. That way we can get into the nut that is sitting right back there and pull off that last mount. Okay, we got to disconnect all of our wiring in here. So we're just going to pull these all off. I like to put these back just so I know where they came from. Okay. Then we'll remove these three pounds. This was with a four millimeter. So we've got to replace this right here. So we're going to cut these things off of here and save this part to replace later and then the stator itself which is in the aluminum frame here is just lightly pressed fit in 
and then we're free and clear. Now we're going to have to take out the brush holder so we can solder in the new brushes themselves. So we're going to pull that off with another 8 millimeter. So we desoldered our wires that were on here before. Best if you leave a little bit of slack so when you're desoldering you have some extra room unless you're really nice have a desolder sucker takes a little bit of heat to get down make sure you get a good melt right down here by the wire itself so don't just barely attach the wire you want to attach heat the metal and wait till the wire itself will suck up the solder There we go. Okay, so we replaced the existing brush holders. They're both worn, and we also had one that was completely broken. So it's a great thing we got new ones with the kit. It's a little bit of a chore to solder these on. We used a drill uh, to drill out the hole after we desoldered and pulled the old ones out. Then we used a drill to drill through the hole. Uh, doesn't take any effort at all because it's just solder to give it a, a nice clean surface. Brushes back in. Now there's a little wire guide right inside here, so you got to make sure the wire where it's soldered to the brush is put in there. And then you just snap the spring back in, and we're good to go. Now I've been using an Allen wrench to pull that spring up and out of our way, and then pull the spring just over the side, not too far. And once again, just slide this guy in there. And then slide the spring on top of it. Now we've got our two brushes. Cool. One of the things you want to make sure is there's some insulators in here. One of them goes, and you can see the holes are different sized. So that insulator must go there before we drop our this back in place. So we reattached the brush holder here. Now one of the things to watch out for, there's an insulator on the one side all the way around it. There's an insulator in the middle of the frame, an insulator on each side of the frame. And it's best to leave this disconnected for a minute while you get that hooked up because then you can move the stator out of your way and then put it all back together here. Okay, we're just putting our outer terminal strips for our spade connectors back on. We put our wire that came off the stator onto the Y terminal block here with this coming out so we can reconnect up. Once again, this is just a eight millimeter. We put our three spade connector back on and we're good to go. This is ready to go back on the bike. Now we will just pull this thing out. Now this is just a press fit, and that's the whole purpose of using this nice bolt that you can buy from John. If you don't have a rotor removal tool, this will do it for you. And there it is. Simple as that. So you can see we put a little nick in our oil seal here. We got our lock pliers on that and pulled that off so we can get the oil seal out. You don't have to replace it but it's a great idea since you're all the way in here. And then we're going to clean off these surfaces with a little carbon choke cleaner. Just to make sure everything is nice and clean before we go back together.